And now it is my great honor to yield the podium to the leader of our commercial competitiveness in every industry sector, the United States Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross. Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Tom, for that introduction, that sporting introduction. I knew we were on a mission. I didn't know we were part of the halftime show. <laughs> but seriously, thank you and your staff for all of the work that you're doing to organize and promote U.S. participation at the Paris Air Show. I'm here simply to discuss U.S. government's participation in the show. It will be the largest and most dramatic ever, just as our aerospace and space industries are more vibrant than ever before. The U.S. has the world's largest and most competitive aerospace and outer space industries. And that's why 350 American companies will present at this year's show in Paris. Our industry has a lot to show off. American companies produce the most innovative, highest quality, highest value-added products sold wherever there are flying machines. U.S. aerospace industry actually has the largest trade surplus of any manufacturing segment, $88 billion last year. And of the $215 billion total U.S. aerospace production, $150 billion, or 70%, is exported. We are the largest exporter of aerospace equipment in the world. And we will have a strong contingent of federal government officials attending the Paris Air Show in addition to myself. There will be representatives from Department of Defense, Navy Air, For Navy Air Force, Marine Corps, Army, and the Departments of State and Homeland Security, as well as the FAA, naturally NASA, and the Export-Import Bank. We will celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing. <laughs> With the presence of three Apollo astronauts who are part of those missions. Walt Cunningham from Apollo 7, Charlie Duke from Apollo 16, and Colonel Al Warden, the command module pilot for the Apollo 15 lunar mission in 1971, from whom we'll hear shortly. It's great to be in the presence of the pioneering individuals who circled and walked on the moon. 50 years have gone by without our returning. Therefore, today, a majority of Americans, 211.6 million, or 65%, were born after 1969, and consequently they have no personal recollection of the moon landing and the excitement it generated the world over. We need to change that, and we're going to change it fast. President Trump has directed that we put astronauts back on the moon by 2024, and this time it will not be just men, there'll also be a female presence. The key messages in Paris will be the U.S. aerospace industry is stronger than ever, and partnerships are important in a world where there are many alternate views about the future of space. Within the Trump administration and the Commerce Department, we see the future of space as overwhelmingly commercial. This is why we will meet later this month on June 26th and 27th at the Space Enterprise Summit, which I will co-host with Secretary Pompeo here in Washington. There's a lot happening in the area of commercial space. Tomorrow, NASA will be announcing new contracting opportunities for the International Space Station. And the National Reconnaissance Office has announced new contracts 
with commercial remote sensing industry, including companies like Maxar Technologies, Planet, and Black Sky Global. Last month, I signed a wide-ranging space MOU with the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg. Luxembourg is a small country but has had a meaningful presence in space since 1985. This MOU is indicative of the partnerships required to substantially expand the size and scope of the US and global space industries. These include GPS, earth imaging, telecommunications, asteroid mining, manufacturing, space tourism, and exploration. They all depend on space safety, space situational awareness, and the safe operation of satellites. Our Paris message is that all spacefaring nations must cooperate on common issues, such as tracking the thousands of pieces of space debris that could stifle the commercialization of space. Our country has experienced an incredible reawakening of its commercial space industry. Today, thanks to the infusion of new blood, new thinking, and a youthful cadre of enthusiastic engineers, scientists, and entrepreneurs, the US space industry is being transformed. In the tradition that has defined this industry since brothers Wilbur and Orville Wright were the first to fly, a new generation of entrepreneurs now dominates space activity. For these companies to reach their potential, the US government must eliminate unnecessary regulatory barriers to growth. We look forward to working with other countries to create conditions by which these industries can flourish. I look forward to being in Paris with so many innovative companies and officials from other governments and their space agencies to foster technical, regulatory, and financial conditions for a global aerospace economy to grow and prosper. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary.